Hello everyone, welcome to episode 50. That's mad, isn't it? I launched the channel in April. It's uh, now September and I'm already at 50 episodes. Thank you so much for everyone that has subscribed and liked and commented and stuff and gave me tips on places to walk and stuff. I really appreciate that. So for this episode, just outside the village of Cromford in Derbyshire, I'm coming down to Lee Mills. Now this, they claim, this is uh, the John Smedley Company, they claim this is the oldest surviving factory business in the world. It was started in 1784 by a fellow called Peter Nightingale, who is related to Florence Nightingale, whose pad is literally just there. It was started by him and John Smedley Sr. But then, a few years later, along came the son, which was another John Smedley, John Smedley Jr. He was born in 1803 and he took this to the next level. So let's have a little look at the remains of John Smedley's mill. And then we're gonna walk up to Ryber Castle, which was John Smedley's house. And then we're gonna come all the way back down to the village of Holloway, which is just there. So it's kind of like a bit of a loop. And we'll visit the grave of John Smedley. One, two, three, four. to stop meeting like this and then I'll buy the fifth time it's just awkward isn't it? so here we go this was kind of expanded by lots of different John Smedley's actually there's 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 lots of different ones over the years so it can get quite confusing so that there is obviously that's 1933 so that's that's a fresh bit 1784 up there so that's the original so let's get in on that make sure we don't get run over so here we go John Smedley, 1784. So that's John Smedley Senior, that's the dad. His son is the one that we're gonna talk about a bit more today, because he was a very, very interesting geezer. So to kind of give it some kind of order, Peter Nightingale, he started it, not a scrap, he started it. He started the company. He used to be the accountant, actually, for Richard Arkwright, who, anyone that knows the Industrial Revolution, Arkwright, Cromford, do you know what I mean? Arkwright is the geezer. He's the grandfather of the Industrial Revolution, really. So this lad, Peter Nightingale, related to Florence, used to be his accountant. He then went on and formed this company, but he needed an overseer. He needed someone, basically, when it came to the, you know, technical side of things, knew what he was doing, and that was John Smedley Sr. And they took a lot of the ideas that Arkwright had had in terms of harnessing the power of the water like they did in Cromford on the River Derwent and they did that here. Whack, whack. So that's what powered this mill. So you can just see there, excuse the wind. Do you know what? It wasn't windy till I started filming. It's always the way, isn't it? So the water went down there. This is called Lee Brook. And that's what powered the machinery. Hey duckies, don't be scared, mate. So that's John Smedley's mills there. It's interesting, it's a mill, do you know what I mean? And as I say, they claim that it's the longest running uh, factory company on the planet, so that's cool. But John Smedley Jr., born in 1803, he's the one that interests me. Reason being, he took over the business from his dad when he was like 23, 24, like no age. And he expanded it and, and he took it to the next level. So it wasn't one of those sort of, you know, nepotism deals where the son or the daughter gets given the company. Okay, let's have it right. It was the sons in those days, weren't it? The daughter weren't getting much. The sons that were given the companies or were given the money and the inheritance or whatever and they kind of just spaffed it up the wall. But this lad took it to the next level. So we're just walking out of the village now. Back there's the mill. I'm hoping I can get a little bit off road because I know that this becomes like a proper windy road with no pavement in a bit and I don't really fancy getting it. So I'm gonna try and see if there's any footpaths off. Plus the sound of the cars is annoying. John Smedley then. The reason I found him quite interesting, I mean, I find the great industrialists interesting anyway, because, you know, they, they, they pave the way basically for, for lots of what we take for granted today. So that in itself is interesting. But he was slightly different to the rest of them. So one, he was deeply religious, which I guess isn't that kind of special because in those days, a lot of people were. 
but he took it to the level where he built a Methodist church in Holloway, which is the next village, which is where we're going to finish this walk. But also that kind of deep, deep um, belief in God brought out a real dislike for, for Victorian medicine um, and Victorian medical practices. He just wasn't having it. And what he followed um, was this belief in, in hydrotherapy, so water therapy, basically, water treatment, the water cure, as it was known then. Now, there's lots of different ways of doing that. So one is just the cleanliness, do you know what I mean? You can cleanse people, you can cleanse a wound or whatever using water. Other stuff is, you know, you can use it for, for treatment of injuries and stuff like that, either with extreme hot or extreme cold. You can submerge the body. You can, I'm gonna get off, I'm gonna get off the road here, I see. Um, and you can do it like that. So there's that treatment. Also, you know, and I've, I've used it when I broke my leg all those years ago was I couldn't, you know, put my full body weight on my leg because I'd snapped it. So when I was trying to build myself back up, yeah, I'm gonna have to go back to the road on an absolute goose chase. Um, I, would, I would be able to walk, but in water, because obviously it would take some of my weight. So what Smedley did was he started this, this, uh, this, this hydrotherapy um, set up and it was, it was known as Smedley's Hydro. And it was in Matlock, which is just over the hill there. Matlock in those days was just a um, hello, was just a um, was just a village. Um, but then he brought in this hydro, and that brought thousands of people from all over the world, famous people too, and um, you know leaders of of, of movements and, and leaders of industry and stuff to to use this hydro. And it took Matlock, this tiny little village that had you know a couple of lead mines and a few quarries, it, it made it into this amazing spa town that it that it is now. I um I go there regularly. Hello, how are you? You right? I'm not talking to myself, honest. Oh, I might be. It's just fair. Um, yeah. And so the the big building that that he built there, Smedley's uh, Smedley's Hydro, is actually the council offices now. It's a huge building that sits at the top of Matlock. Um, incredible, really. He wrote a best-selling no no novel as well, which went through like twelve editions. He was a real, you know, he was a real pioneer. Um, they built him and his wife, he met his wife and, and, and they, they built this house at Ryber Castle. I say house, yeah, it's called Ryber Castle for a reason. They, uh, they built Ryber Castle in 1862. They built a free hospital so that people could, could, um, could, could be treated for ailments and stuff like that, but using different therapies, not, not buying into this, you know, Victorian um, way of thinking. It's kind of ahead of his time, really. And it's funny because you don't, you, you tend to think of great industrialists as people that just made money, really. Um, you know, mass produced things, made a load of money, probably didn't treat their workers that great. And here you've got this guy that inherits this, this big mill um, in this great industrial area of Derbyshire. And whilst taking it to the next level and making it successful, and it's still going now, hundreds of years later, so it's pretty successful, he's put his, effort and his time into uh into helping people which was amazing and because we're going to end the walk at his, his gravestone and that sounds a bit morbid but actually his death was more of a, a celebration of life really um you know lots of people spoke out on his behalf when he died there was real mourning in the area five thousand people in a procession at his funeral incredible really so a real, a real great guy, you know. No footway for, for 200 yards. That's where it's about to get spicy, I think, because some people do fly down these roads. I keep looking to my left and right. I mean, there's a footpath there, but it's literally going up to that road, and that's not where I need to go. Goodness me, look at the size of you. Hello. How we doing, mate? Oh, you're adorable. Mummy's not messing about, is she? Wow. How's it going? Right. I do like cows. I always get distracted by cows. John Smedley um, was really into cows. Really enjoyed. I don't know that. I don't know that. He probably couldn't stand them. He probably ate them.
there. So I'm up towards the top of the hill now, so it might get a bit windy, so I'm sorry about that. I've been walking annoyingly, basically, they're not even B roads, C roads, um, but they're blind corners and stuff. Obviously a car could come and have your legs at any minute. So I've managed to come off and I've kind of skirted around the side of the road with, um, with some field access. I can see right the castle now, so let me turn you around. Look at that, just in the distance there. Look at those turrets. Is it Gothic? Gothic architecture, I think it is. It's getting a bit cold now as well, that wind. But, um, so John Smedley built this in 1862, and it was known at the time as Smedley's Folly, because ironically, given everything he'd done with hydrotherapy, they couldn't get water up here. They had a real issue getting the water up here, so I've still heard it called Smedley's Folly, even, even recently. I think it's an amazing building, though. And he lived here until he died in 1874, and then his wife actually carried on. She, she lived here until she died in 1892, I think, and then, it became a prep school and then during the war it was used to store um, weapons and, and bombs and stuff and then it became a zoo um, and the crazy story about that is that they then shut down the zoo because they've been breeding lynx which they weren't meant to be doing so they went and released the lynx in some sort of hill, hills or, or mountainous area in Europe which I'm not sure is that responsible really I'm now thinking that there's probably somewhere, someone in Europe has got a walking channel like this. So I mean, just nipping out, love. Yeah, yeah, just walk, walk up the hill for a bit. And they come back an hour later with one leg. Hop in. Lynx has had it. There we go. Now, I don't think, well, I, I, it's not I don't think. I know we can't get into the site. It's got like crazy security and stuff. So I think this is about as close as I'm going to be able to get. Um, you can get round the corner further down the road and there is a gatehouse, but that's actually further away from the building itself So you can't actually see it But look at that It was it was bought and was meant to be being turned into apartments, but that was like 2006 maybe Obviously now, you know 2023, so I'm not sure what's really going on with it, but You can't see now, but I'll send the drone up because it overlooks Matlock the former village of Matlock, the town that John built. So I've come up that one road and then, you know, a few sort of bits and bobs going into fields and stuff to try and not get run over. And what I'm going to do, I'm going to walk around the side of Ryber Castle and then I'm going to go down a different road. There's actually two routes up um, from Lee Bridge. So I'm going to walk this route down and this should take me straight then into Holloway um, where I can, fingers crossed, find the grave of, of John Smedley. Hello, mate. Ah, just walked off. There we go. At least I know I'm going in the right direction. It's beautiful. A little more lane. We're just coming down the hill now, not far outside um, Holloway. This is where John Smedley Jr. is is buried. He died in 1874. And I actually couldn't find a cause of death, just that he, he, he was taken ill, he was ill for a day, he was jaundiced, so I'm assuming from that that it was something to do with the liver, liver disease. And um, his death was met with like unbelievable amount of sadness in the local area. 5,000 people at his funeral, which is incredible, isn't it? 
and some of the people that were speaking out on his behalf about how amazing he was and how incredible he was, those were people that had worked for him for years and stuff. So I always think that's a good sign. Do you know what I mean? You've not got to suck up to the boss anymore because he's gone. But you're still, you know, saying nothing but nice things about him. Um, there is a memorial at this church. So I'm going to try and find that. I'm still feeling my legs, you know, from the last walk, from having to run back. Seven mile run back. I mean, I'm not showing off, but I'm an hour and 25 minutes. I was happy with that, having walked seven miles there. Beautiful countryside. But you can just see some houses now, so we're just not far. So we're just about to pass into Holloway now. I can see a sign that says Holloway. Also, let me turn you around so you can see it. See those roofs down in the valley? Oh, you're making my finger in the right place. That's where we started. That's Lee Mills. So we've walked up in that valley up to Ryber, which is just over that hill so you can't see it. And then we've come back this way. That up there, that big hill, that's Worksworth there, um, which will be significant in a minute. Okay, there's the sign. Childhood home of Florence Nightingale. Um, I also, um, on one of these walks, I want to go to Florence Nightingale's house because I've actually got a contact for the fellow that owns it. So that's another one for next month, I think. But across the road, there's Holloway Cemetery. Let's go and find John Smedley. So I don't need to traipse around and look at lots of different gravestones because I know exactly what I'm looking for. There we go. That's Caroline Ann. It says this side. She, she was his wife. She lived on at Ryber. Um, after he passed away, and there it is, John Smedley, can you see it on that side? I don't want to clamber up here, do you know what I mean? Because I'm just not doing that, because it's graves. There you go. Rest in peace, John Smedley. So there's the grave of John Smedley. Now, the, the reason I said Worksworth was significant a minute ago is because there was actually a piece in the, in the Worksworth advertiser when John Smedley died. Um, now I'm paraphrasing, because I'm obviously doing it from memory, but... It basically read, John Smedley is dead. A greater calamity is unlikely to, to befall this neighborhood than this will likely prove to be. I've probably butchered that, but I've done my best. But basically, yeah, do you know what I mean? Like he was such a huge loss um, to this neighborhood and to the, to the people of the area, to the, to the people that, that worked in this area that, you know, they, they, they were genuinely mourning this geezer. Um, like I say, 5,000 people at your funeral in, in a massive funeral procession. And and this is, you know, this is in 1874. The, the, these these villages were, were less populated then. So to get 5,000 people out, that's incredible, really. So let me come across the road again, just to look at that beautiful scenery. And down to Lee Mills down there in the valley. As always, thank you so much for watching. Really appreciate it. Also, again, big thanks for, for all your help getting me to 50 episodes. It's incredible. All the comments, all the likes, all, all the subscribers, you know, people giving me tips, saying where to go, cars ruining it. Do you mind? I really appreciate it. Thank you, and I'll see you next time.